So welcome to this course, FP&A Professional Debt and CapEx Forecasting and Analysis. You may already know this, but this particular course is the fifth course in a series of seven FP&A courses in total that all use the same underlying financial model that we're looking at right now. So if you haven't had the opportunity to check out the four FP&A courses that precede this one in the series, well, then you should definitely check them out as they'll teach you how to build the financial model up until this point right here. You're probably super excited to get started on this fifth course in the series. So let's dive in now and check out the course material. So welcome back to the next FP&A course in the series. And in this particular course, we're going to look at two schedules, one that we can see here for capital expenditure and a second one for a debt schedule. Now there's really two things motivating us to build this particular schedule. The first one is down here. You can see we have a nice depreciation summary all the way across here. We absolutely need to summarize the depreciation so that we can put together the company's income statement. And the other main reason that we're putting together the schedule is actually right down here. We absolutely need to forecast the CapEx. We need a CapEx summary because this is gonna to flow to the company's cash flow statement and we need this line item to complete that cash flow statement. So what we were really after with this schedule was these figures down here. But what we also did was we put together a couple of corkscrews. Why did we do that? Well, we didn't need to, but we had all the component pieces. So we thought it would be a good idea to track two things in a corkscrew. One is right here, property, plant, and equipment for the office. And the second one is here, property, plant, and equipment across here for the software. So this particular model does not have a balance sheet. So we really didn't have to calculate these corkscrews for PPE office and PPE software, but we thought it was a nice thing to do just so we could track the cumulative amounts that have been spent on those two line items. Now, as you can see, we've jumped ahead here to the debt schedule. If you haven't put together a debt schedule before, you are in for a treat but also a little bit of a challenge. First, it's important to understand why we need this schedule in the model. Remember, we're trying to put together an income statement down here. We definitely need the interest expense line for the income statement. We wanna look at interest expense here, take off the interest income, and then get a net interest expense. So we can translate that right through to the income statement. Now, the reason that this particular schedule may be tricky is because there's going to be some line items like this one, the change in cash, we won't have yet because we haven't constructed the company's cash flow statement. Also down here, cash from operations and cash from investing. Again, we don't have the cash flow statement done yet, so these won't exactly match up in your model. So don't worry about those line items not matching up just yet. We're gonna walk you through every step of the way. The other thing that you may notice is you may be looking at this schedule saying, wait a sec, I thought this was a debt schedule, so why do we have cash and why are we tracking cash on a debt schedule? Well, there's two reasons for that. The first reason that we include a cash section here is we need interest income. We need the interest income to net off down here to get to net interest income. And that reason may be obvious, but there's another reason why we're tracking cash here as well. The other reason that we're tracking the company's cash balance up here is because we need it to flow down into this available cash section. This helps us determine whether or not the company needs to draw on the revolver or whether it can afford to repay the revolver. So this section here is really there just to make the revolving credit line section here all the way across here work perfect. So there's really lots to digest in this debt schedule. Don't worry, we're going to walk you through it every step of the way. And after these next lessons, I hope you're going to find that you're very, very familiar and comfortable with putting debt schedules into models like this one. Let's jump ahead to the next video and get it all started. Now, this capital expenditure schedule that we're looking at here is really pretty straightforward. We're really going to encourage you to try to fill this out completely on your own, and then we'll walk through it for you afterwards. So the reason that we're quite confident that you'll be able to do this is because this entire schedule is just links or simple formulas. We're gonna use those to put together two corkscrews. Let's walk through a little bit of it just to give you some hints. Now, one thing to remember is that just before this video, you should have had the opportunity to download two files from our learning management system. One would be 
the template that we're looking at right now, which is an Excel file. The other thing would be a PDF printout of the completed model. Now you definitely wanna look at that PDF printout to make sure that as you're building this particular schedule up, all your numbers are matching that PDF. So let's get started. What you're gonna to wanna to do in here for the number of employees is that's gonna be just a straight link. And then knowing the number of employees is gonna allow you to calculate how many new employees were added. We've got the CapEx per employee, which we can translate all the way across this row. And that's gonna allow you to calculate the office CapEx. Once that top section's completed, you'll have everything that you need to calculate and fill out this corkscrew from one period to the next to the next. That's the way corkscrews always work. They go from left to right. Now the next section will be down here below this blue line. All across here, if you were to put in some numbers, you'll notice this is blue font. So that means we're asking you to load some data in here. So just look at the PDF and load in the numbers that you see. Once that software spend is in there, then you'll have everything that you need to put together this second corkscrew here. And then finally, with those two corkscrews complete, you will have absolutely everything you need to calculate this section down below, which you'll find is just simple formulas and a few little links. So hopefully that was a good overview just to get you started. We're really eager for you to hop in there and try it on your own. Remember, do what you can. If you get stuck in a couple of places, that's no big deal because we're going to walk through it with you and make sure that you have all the correct formulas in place. Good luck and we'll see you soon. So hopefully you had good success at filling out this schedule, but let's just go through it quickly just to make sure that you have the same formulas that we do. Let's get started. So first up, the number of employees here, you're gonna find that this is just a simple link. Let's hop into the cell, put in an equal sign. We're gonna use the page up button here. We need to go up a fair distance here to find the number of employees, and we're gonna find it here. You can see employee scheduling right there. It's gonna be right down at the bottom here. Row 115 is the employee count. We just hit enter and we've established that link. Let's just roll things up a little bit here with a scroll lock key so we can see exactly what we're doing. So now what we can do is quick copy, highlight across, Alt S down to formulas and hit enter. So next up, let's go down here. New employees added right into this cell. And what you may have done in this cell for a formula is just put in a simple equals this number of employees minus the number of employees in the previous period. That's gonna be fine for now, but we're gonna come back and modify this in a second. But let's just hit enter for now and leave this as is. So in this cell here, we're just gonna put in an equal sign and link to the CapEx per employee that we've loaded in there of 10 and hit enter. So next up to calculate office CapEx, we'll put in an equal sign. We're literally gonna multiply new employees added times CapEx per employee. We're gonna hit enter. Let's do a copy. Let's just paste it forward one column like that for now. And that's gonna put us in a nice place now to copy these across. So we'll grab these, copy, all the way across here, Alt S, down to formulas, and hit enter. Now one of the things we noted is that we might wanna make a change to this formula here. So let me explain for a second. If we pop up here, you don't need to do this on your computer, you can just observe for a second. Let's imagine out here that the number of employees actually dropped. And let's just hard code a seven in there for one second. You can see then that's gonna cause a negative office capex here. So we really wanna prevent this from coming out as a negative number. So what we're gonna do in there to do that, again, instead of using an if statement, what we're gonna do is use a max function, okay? We're gonna pop in here. Let's wrap this in a max function. Open up the bracket like that. We're gonna take the max of this here, put in a comma and zero. Close the bracket and hit enter. Now we're gonna copy that and paste it all the way forward, Alt S, down to formulas, and you can see that prevents the negative down here. Now, before we forget, let's copy this formula and paste the formula across there just to get rid of that hard-coded seven. So that's the change that we want. We want the max function in there to prevent a negative number. Now, with this section of the model completed right here, we're in a perfect position to do the corkscrew that's down below for PP&E office. So what we're gonna do here, we've got this number loaded in. The office capex is just gonna be an equal sign link up to the office capex there. When we get down to the bottom here, we're gonna put in a sum function. Open up the bracket, grab these three cells, hit enter. So we're just summing those three numbers up just like that. So let's just fill out this next column here, and then we'll be in a position to paste everything forward. So here's where the corkscrew comes in. We say equals, and we reach back, 
to the ending balance there and hit enter. For the office capex, we can just do a copy, pay special, formulas. And then for the depreciation equals, we're going to link to this depreciation amount here. And then we can take our sum function and alt ts, pay special the formulas there. So let's take a look at these formulas quickly. There we are reaching back to the ending balance for the previous period. We're loading in the new office capex. We're subtracting off depreciation here. And then we have a sum function for our ending balance. With that completed, it's really simple. We're just going to do a copy here and highlight all the way across to the end, alt ts, down to formulas, and we're all set with that corkscrew. So we already have the top half of the schedule done. Let's jump ahead to the next video, and we're going to start in on the PP&E software corkscrew. We'll see you there. Now, as we had mentioned when we were going through the tour of this particular schedule, across here for the software spend, these are all inputs, and we wanted you to put the information in here. Now, we're going to use a little trick that we've used before. Notice that we've highlighted these cells in advance. Most of them are zeros, so we're going to put in a zero like this and then hit Control Enter. And it populates zeros all the way through really quickly. Now, you would have definitely needed to look at the PDF copy of the model to know what numbers to put in here. So let's go across and we're going to show you how most people would load data in and then give you a tip on how to load it even faster. So let's put in the first number, 2500 like this, and we hit Enter. Then we have to go up and move over and do the same thing again, like this. And notice how slow it is moving up and over all the time like this to enter the data. So let's just undo those two steps and look at a different method. Instead, what we could do, which is a little bit quicker, is we highlight across these four cells where we want to put in data first. Now we go 2500, enter, goes to the next cell, 2500, enter, 2500, enter, 1000, enter. So that's just a little nice tip to keep in your back pocket. Excel is obviously set up to enter data vertically. So if you're going to put data into a cell and you're just hitting the enter key, it's going to move down. If you're loading data horizontally, great idea to select it first. And then every time you hit enter, it'll just index over to the right for you. Now let's head over here and work on the corkscrew for PP&E software. Software CapEx. Well, it's going to be a simple link right here to the row that we just completed. We can put our sum function in at the bottom like this, open the bracket. We're grabbing three numbers and hitting enter. We can pop up here, beginning balance. It's going to link backwards to the ending balance. Software CapEx we've got. Let's copy that and do alt ES to paste the formulas over here. The depreciation we're going to equal to the previous amount, which was zero. And then we've got our sum function here. We can copy forward with the paste special formulas, just like that. Now that we have this column completed here, let's do a copy, highlight across, alt ES, paste special formulas, and hit enter. We're all done that corkscrew. Now you may think it's a little bit odd that we've set the depreciation to zero. This management consulting company is currently developing this software. So they're pouring a lot of money into the software CapEx, we're not charging any depreciation yet because they haven't yet reached commercial production where they're going to start selling access to the software. So the depreciation amounts are set to zero for now and further out beyond the scope or the timeline of this model is when they would start attaining commercial production and then you'd have a depreciation amount which would be non-zero. Now given that they're still developing the software not yet in commercial production, we could have set this label as WIP software, meaning work in progress. The idea is that you'd often categorize something like this as a work in progress till you reach commercial production, and then it would flip over to property plant and equipment. We just left it here as property plant and equipment software to keep things simple and also consistent with what we have up here. Now we can quickly finish up the bottom section here. Depreciation summary, office equipment equals negative. We're gonna link up to this negative one. And that's going to give us a positive number there. Software equals negative. Link up to this depreciation amount. And then what we want in here is just a little sum function to grab those two cells right there and hit enter. Now we can link up down here office capex equals. We're not going to put a negative sign because we already have a positive number up here. So we're going to do a direct link like that. Software capex we can link up to right here. Software spend. And then a little sum function in here. Open the bracket. Grab those two cells, we're all set. But next up, let's copy and paste all of these together. We're gonna to highlight all of these like this, copy all the way across these two sections, Alt ES, down to formulas, and hit enter. 
So we want all these numbers down here to show up as positives. But when you have a row with an entry of zeros like this, not a bad idea to test it. Watch what we're going to do. Let's just put a non-zero number in there like negative 5 for depreciation. And we have the positive 5 coming out there, which is what we want. So we can undo that now that we've performed that test and everything's looking just fine. So let's jump ahead next to the debt schedule. As we mentioned, it's going to be really interesting. There's going to be some challenges, but we're going to be there with you every step of the way. Lots of cool stuff in there to learn. We'll see you in a moment. Continue learning. Join CFI today.